Thank you all for coming today. Uh, we also have here with us um, Zico, who is the producer of the movie, and also Ronobir, who is the cinematographer and producer. It's a not it's a unique combo. <laughs> uh, I, I want to start with what the last five months have been like. Um, I think it's been what about five months since the film made history. I can. I wanted to ask you what has been the most pinch me, holy shit, I can't believe this is actually happening moment. Let me give you a couple of options. And then you, can tell me. Uh, you have the eight minute standing ovation uh, at Cannes after the world premiere. You have winning the grand prize, being handed the award by Viola Davis. You have the five star review from Peter Bradshaw in The Guardian amongst many others. Uh, you have making it to the Times 100 list with a curiously pen note by Ayushman Kurana. You have, uh, obviously today we are on the eve of the grand premiere of the film at Mami's Mumbai Film Festival and you're about to release it in India, the UK, and the US. So, uh, and that delightfully viral red carpet dancing moment, which I think we all love. Um, <laughs> so what has been the most pinch me moment amongst all of that, or is it something that I haven't even mentioned? I mean, all of it was a lot <laughs> and was very surreal. And uh, uh, it's a film that we took very many years to make. And, you know, so getting selected was already, we were, pleasantly surprised and honored. But I think all of it leads to one thing that I am the most excited still about is that the film will release in India and people will go and buy a ticket to watch my movie. That makes me really happy. <laughs> I think this is a good time for you guys to announce the India release date, if you want to do the honors. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Hi, hi guys. Good <laughs> afternoon. I'm Rana Dagobadi, usually not known for films like these. Uh, <laughs> but uh, all we imagine is light will have a large pan-Indian theatrical release on the 22nd of November. And uh, so one is it's a, it's a huge honor for us to be part of this film and bring it to all of you guys. And thank you, Payal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> such an awesome film that you've made and, and partnering with, with us to get this film out. No, I, I, I wanted to ask you about this wonderfully unlikely collaboration. You know, you are someone who has in the past championed, you know, various films. You know, we talked about Sem Sem Sam Charlie, Gadi, there was Care of Cancer Palam. You know, we were discussing this earlier, and I still feel a lot of those films still have a very mainstream syntax. They're still very crowd-pleasing films in a lot of ways. This is the first time that you backed and presented a true blue indie darling with Bile Swim. So what drew you to it? What made you feel like you wanted to be part of this journey? So one, uh, see, even now, after 20 years in the movies, I still fail what is independent and what is mainstream. Uh, we always had a thought where cinema that had big song and dance was the mainstream cinema and everything that had a unique story and emotion became independent mm -hmm. because it was always hard to release without big stars in it, without big other names in attached to it. And now I think India has gone to that phase. Uh, so like my career actually started with a film called Bamalata, which was an independent film that won national awards, but we didn't, couldn't get a theatrical release at that point. Uh, from then on, it was trying to find space for this. Uh, in India, we Unlike the rest of the world, there's no government grants or anything for filmmakers or art in that form. It's just always been the merit of the film and a few filmmakers that have really championed films out, right? Uh, so the few films that you mentioned earlier were really the start of many things that we did. All of them had a certain regional understanding. I mean, I, I come from Telugu cinema, so Kanchar Kero Kanchar Palam was the first film, which was, for us, an all-independent film. but. The humor in that film made it slightly more mainstream. It is such a lovely film. I, I will Thank say that endlessly. Thank you. But uh, again, when I saw All We Imagine, right, to me, it was, it was almost like watching a regular Malayalam film. To me, it was not independent in that sense because Malayalam cinema has a storytelling or a narrative that it's used to in this style. And, uh, mm. and, yeah, and, and I just feel like with this, we're trying to break the format of how an independent film should be released in India because it, should, it can't take the regular route of here you go, you have a big pre-release and then there's 30 days of promotion and then the film's out. I think it needs a different cycle. Uh, so we started with the release in Kerala. We want to keep moving across different states. Tomorrow is the, is the, is the screening at Mami. And then they will follow a bunch of screenings across different states before we do a main theatre. I, I do really want to ask you uh, about what you said, you know, the idea of a different approach to a film like this. But, but by first, I have to ask the same question to you. Um, I know that you got various phone calls from various uh, fancy people in terms of distributing this film. So what was it about Rana that you felt that 
these were the right hands for the journey of this work? I think they had a very uh, well planned distribution approach which would kind of understand what the film could do in different regions and also in the uh, uh, Kerala film industry. So the kind of the the understanding of that that it's not a film that we can just release world uh, nationwide without a thought to the kind of film it is i felt they were very sensitive to that and i i really uh, uh, respected that uh, that look at distribution because you know distribution can be just putting some money into something and releasing it but to really think about how to place the film correctly i felt that they really had a great uh, sensitivity to that thank you <laughs> I, I also have to ask you the question that I feel like you might be tired of answering at this point, uh, which is just about the journey of the film and where it started. I've, I've heard you talk about this in various different countries and film festivals around the world, which is a wonderful problem to have. But just talk us through where it started. I believe this film has been with you for six years. It's yeah. We're thinking about during your time at FTI. Yeah, it took a long time. <laughs> uh, it was a film that I, uh, when I was a student at FTI, I, it was, I was making my final diploma project. And at that time, I was in different uh, hospital situations with two family members. And when you're a student filmmaker, you find everything very interesting. I think that's true of all filmmakers. We find life more interesting than cinema, and that is our privilege as filmmakers. Uh, so I was very keen to make a film, and I wanted to make a film about uh, women who, who are in the working space. And a hospital provides um, a good kind of environment to to have multiple issues uh, that you can bring up. So I felt it would be the right um, space to make a film. But as I started researching more and the city came in in a big way that I realized that I wanted to make a much longer film. And it took many years then to write the script and do more research and um, raise funding for it. So that was the kind of starting point. And um, it's now finished <laughs> after five years. Uh, finished is an understatement. It's now being celebrated. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, it was being released in is it over 50 countries. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, hell of an achievement. Um, Rana, I wanted to ask you, I feel like your average week as an actor, artist, producer, producer, distributor, in terms of what you're watching is not all that different to mine. It's a lot of mass moments and big EGM and entry sequences and thundering background score and swag. And I'm not looking down on those films, you know, they can be immense fun, but I'm curious to know, as an audience, what do you feel you get when you, when you step away from that and watch a film as meaningful and soulful as this one? Because it feels like it appeals to a very different part of our being. See, one is, uh, w what fascinated me always, I mean, forget being a filmmaker or just as, as a human, right, is India is so diverse in its culture and very little of that has translated to film. And I just feel like anything that slice of life that we're able to showcase a certain culture in India needs to be shown to the rest of the country because we're extremely different, but we're still unique and still alike. Yeah. So I think that's what cinema like All We Imagine does uh, really well, where you see the story of Malayali nurses in Bombay, in a city like Bombay, which is really for everyone. It's, it's your city, but it's not. And uh, I've been in this city almost like 15 years now, coming and going, but there's a certain love that I have for the city, but there's, if something wrong happens, it spits me right out back. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's the beauty that this film has, and, and I think it really requires more filmmakers to make cinema like this and just find unique ways to release them, that's all. Uh, in terms of Bombay, I read an interview where you said, uh, it's the city that never settles, which I love, I'm stealing yeah. that line. Um, and but I have to ask that's you about nice your line. relationship with the city. You know, uh, I was telling you earlier, this truly is one of the most achingly beautiful Mumbai movies I've ever seen, and, and I'm not at all just saying that. You know, mild spoiler alert, your film opens with these little sort of voiceover vignettes of everyday Mumbai girls talking about their relationship with the city, and I could have watched just two hours of that. Yeah, I, I, I could make two hours of that. <laughs> I literally fell in love with the movie before I met a single main character or got a sense of plot. So, what is it about this city that really drew you in as a storyteller? Because the way you capture the feeling of Bombay, in a, it's such a, in such a romantic, but also like achingly tragic way. Yeah. Uh, and you've also said that the next film you may be working on is also based on the history of the city. So what is it about the city that keeps drawing you in as a storyteller? See, I am from here. So for me, it's the city I know best. Uh, and it's a city that I didn't always grow up in. Like I would, I would be studying in different parts of the country and coming back 
to mumbai and i think when you leave a place and come back you see the changes more evidently and you realize what uh, the city comes to mean to you in different ages of your life and different times and for me the city is full of contradiction like any big city is because mumbai i mean in some ways for a lot of uh, women it's a city which is a little bit easier to navigate to negotiate to work late uh, compared to many other parts of our country and uh, but it's also such an expensive city and it's a city where like to live and to live comfortably you need to do a lot of work and you don't really get any time off you spend like one hour in the train every day just to go anywhere then it rains and the harbor line will stop and you know so these these things are part of our life but it's also a city that brings us delight so it was all these contradictions that i have a love hate relationship with it i can't live without it but it's a uh, the city with lot of problems also uh, there's a beautiful line of the melody one what we talk about you love the city uh, it's something even from talking about the spirit of mumbai and how that's just a tag for dealing with hardship and i think one of the yeah. characters says that you have to believe the illusion or else you'll go mad uh, yeah. which is a wonderful way of phrasing it um ran i want to ask you about this idea of pan india you know it's this tag that has been and in, in lot of ways this film sort of challenges that you know because pan india is known as it's referring to specific kinds of casting and packaging to for blockbusters to be in different markets and here you have a film uh, about malayali nurses in bombay that flits between malayalam and hindi and marathi and english in bits um, so do you hope that it, it's a good film that's pan india in spirit not packaging so do you hope that this is the kind of pan india film that we get to see more of so i think one uh, the word pan india has been coined with the release of bahubali that's the first time a telugu film was watched in different places and we knew that one story can be told to the rest of the country uh, but then that word is just overused in, in funny ways now uh, but i think truly in spirit i think all we imagine is a film that is not dubbed in a, in a certain regional language it's not going language to language it, it has a source of being in bombay uh, for an audience who speaks hindi it's as much their film for an audience who speaks malayalam it's as much theirs for everybody else who connects with the idea of of women in a workplace of just living just cuts that very beautifully uh in terms of its release i think it's probably bigger than all the pan indian films happening because globally i don't think very few films get to release in as many countries as it does uh and we just heard about the release in france i don't think any indian films has actually went out there and released in that size but i think really india means everything and i just feel like now is a time where boundaries have kind of blurred away and everyone's accepting of one another much more than what we were earlier mm. uh, if i say 15 20 years ago when i i first came to bombay no one knew where hyderabad was where chennai was you didn't know which city was what they thought i spoke tamil uh, people here used to call me say watch a malayalam film and say do you know what this means but that was the awareness then and that today it's it's very very different so i think it's it's time that we are growing to understand india better and i think this pan indian moment is really coming of age right now and and i'm hoping with all we imagine we have many more films like this and cinema like this becomes mainstream quickly yeah when i started do, do, doing this i thought it would be a good idea Hello. but then i realized how challenging it really is uh, to make a film in a language you don't speak uh but because the starting point was in the hospital and with the people i had met i felt that it was an honest thing to do uh it took 2 years to uh with with my co-writer robin to to rework the dialogues in malayalam and so that was a long process and we 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 tried to keep the nuances of the dialects of the language as much true as possible and uh, then getting the actors on board they also added a lot to that so i think of it as a really collaborative film in that sense where it's not like you know we the actors really contributed a lot to how the lines should be and what what is going through the characters minds and which region they come from in kerala so all these things um i learned a lot basically while doing it and i am the kind of person who loves process so for me every opportunity to learn is is a wonderful one so i think it was a in that sense it was a, a really a experience for me to continuously grow as a filmmaker but just speaking of process you also you know you have made non fiction essays in the past and you talk a lot about how non fiction really 
the term you use is liberated you as a filmmaker to approach a fiction film. What do you mean by that? I mean with non-fiction, uh, you know, there is, with, with fiction, there is a whole large team that comes with it and there are a lot of people on the set and uh, with non-fiction, you can be a bit more just you, the camera person and go into the streets and shoot. Now, I was struggling with how to make a Mumbai film. If I have to recreate Mumbai in a studio, I don't think I would be able to do it. So, uh, we took a lot of freedom with the kind of camera we would have. We could go into the city and shoot like documentary style. And uh, that's the, that for me made it more, um, give it that feeling of say Muhammad Ali road or shooting on the station and things like this to, to I don't think I have the imagination to recreate that so in that sense it helped me a lot to have that non-fiction freedom you know talent. see like you just mentioned the word pan India before. see unlike the rest of the world where one country has one industry and you go to one place to solve all cinema problems India you have 20 places to solve it uh, each region is almost a country of its own. Yeah. And unless, like, until a few years ago, no one even spoke the same language, actually, in terms of understanding how to bridge those gaps. Like, for example, Telugu films landed up here because of one or two channels deciding that they just need more content and they just dubbed out Telugu films in Hindi. And on that bedrock is where all the other Baobulis and Ghazis sat from there on. So I think now is a time where we're somewhere sensing that there is this one industry where there is some cinema that will cut across India, doesn't matter where you make it. So I think it's in that early stage, though we're 100 years old in cinema, like regionally, each region has its history, but really as a cinematic nation, probably this is year four or year five for us in that sense. So I think it's, it is an uphill battle, but uh, I think with filmmakers like Payal, I just hope she makes more films. Uh, she's taken a long time to make this. Uh, <laughs> But I hope, it's again, it's consistency and creating a habit. Mm -hmm. And once it's a habit, then I think everything changes very quickly. If you know that, okay, every month there is a film of this nature that you can watch in a cinema close to you, I think that's going to become a habit. That will become education, that will become culture for you. You'll understand the world in a much better light than what you would have otherwise. I, I do want to ask you about the release, but first, I, I want to give your perspective on that as well, because so many gents like yours uh, within the independent circuit, you know, our co-productions with other countries, you know, in your case, you have, uh, you know, French producers who have really championed it. Um, I'm curious to know why that is for so many of these wonderful independent films, uh, so many documentaries in the last few years while we watched all that reads, you know, they are international co-productions. Is it because the ecosystem here doesn't enable production of films like this? See, as independent filmmakers, there's a challenge at every step. Even if you manage to get funding from India completely, like for example, Natesh Hegde's film was his first film, Pedro, was financed uh, in India itself. But the next step is distribution. How do you put it out there and where does it get shown? And so independent filmmakers are always struggling with every step of the way, like to, to make the film, then to show the film and to see, you know, how to make a sustained, sustainable life uh, for it. So I think... It's not, I mean, the co-productions are the ones that get to festivals, so they get printed in the news. But there are so many films that are made locally also, which uh, maybe in the region they will get a release, which are uh, more independent. But to get it all over the country, we don't always have that, and it goes to OTT. Like, so see, for example, Mahesh Narayanan's film, Declaration. It was, it's a great film, and the way we know it is because it came out on Netflix, but it should have had a theatrical release all over the country because it's a great film. And I feel that there are so many good films that there are there, and like uh, now Reema Das has also uh, made a new film, Village Rockstars 2. It, she's an amazing filmmaker, and we all should be watching these films. So what is the right approach to getting phenomenal films like this, the audience that we hope does exist and does not watch them? How do you approach them? Uh, see, like earlier we've done it in the regional world where uh, I've done mostly in Telugu, so I can speak about that. Because it's, it's only one state, okay, now it's two states of Telugu speaking people, but mm. it's a shorter audience to reach. Uh, so multiple screenings in that space, just going focused helps. 
I think with all we imagine, we'll also discover how to do this in India correctly. Yeah. So because ultimately you want to hear about it much more. Uh, it's not going to have uh, flashy trailers like how the other trailers are and just bang you and say, here you go, buy tickets now, book tickets now. But that, that excitement is, is not what the cinema is here to create. It's, it's word of mouth, it's how you... See, today we have one mommy that's popular and maybe one festival in Goa. Right? But if every state has its festival and there's a provision to show these films over a period of time, I think that's, that's the right way to do it, where people hear about it way in advance before you actually get to cinema. So I think we'll keep evolving that strategy. I think uh, with All We Imagine, we've first said that, okay, organically it's Malayalam, so let's do the Malayalam release first get it out in Cochin, then move state by state. And, uh, and now we're in Bombay because that's organically the second language that's uh, in the film. And I think we'll go across the country. And, and I think the film will somewhere tell us, uh, see like the screening in Kerala, like we were very unsure what that means. We didn't know how to release it. But the second we just put it in that screen, it, in two minutes it started, it's, it closed up the screening. And then they suddenly called and said, can we put, add more screens? So you know there is an excitement for it. That means there is a definite audience for it. We just have to go and find it. Yeah. So I think that's uh, and I said, like I said, if you can find a way to create a habit, and all these fine people here are going to help us do that round from now on. Uh, no, I have a question for a second. While I want to end with you, uh, you've said that the title of your film obviously means the open possibility. You said it's a title you took from your mother's painting, which is fair. Um, it's a wonderful title. Um, there's also the Malayali title. Prabhaya in Indichadallam, which Prabha is the character in the film. Yeah. So Prabha also means light. So there is a double word play with that. So for our Malayali audiences. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you about hope. In this moment, you had this insane journey. There is such an exciting book ahead. Um, whether it's in terms of the film, the release, the experience, what gives you hope? This moment now <laughs> that we can release it. That's really like, I think the nicest thing and uh, I really, I feel that it, the cinema is still a space that I really enjoy going to and I feel that, you know, that films should get a release at least in the cinema, even if they are independent films, we should find a way uh, that they get, that you can go to the cinema and watch them, maybe eventually they will come on the OTT, but just the, the act of going and sitting with strangers and watching a movie and crying in the darkness, that for me is cinema and uh, I, I hope that, you know, that it's, uh, we get more distribution for independent movies uh, in the future. Uh, fingers crossed. Hope for that. <laughs> uh, I think Okay, can you hear me? Okay. No, I was asking, are you going to be continuing with independent cinema or are there other genres that you're going to explore and what are your new projects, next projects? I'm, uh, see, I never say never. You never know where, where life takes you and when you're an independent filmmaker, you, you try to take every opportunity to be able to make the film that you want to make. So I think that will always continue. The, the mode of getting there, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully it won't take this much time like last time. It's a happy problem that happened. You're still living the experience of this one. Yeah, but Hi. we have to think about that as filmmakers. Hi, Payal. I'm Neetu Singh from Danik Bhaskar. Hi. First of all, you have to thank a lot of people. In the Cannes Film Festival, the first film has been so good for so many years. You have to thank a lot of people for that. So, my question is, I'm a little curious to know that all we imagine as light, what has inspired you to create a female identity and to bring the world in front of the world? I would like to know this from you. The film is basically about friendship. And the film's characters, the bond between them is a very Mumbai-specific bond. We come from different states and make our career here. So, our family becomes a family with those people who live with them. We would not have normally met those people. But they become our family. And that is one of the things that is very important to me in the film. But they become our family. And that is one of the things that is very important to me in the film. 
टॉपिक पे फिल्म बनाना चाहेंगे या आपने कुछ और सोचा है इसके बाद मुझे मुंबई को लेके बहुत ही इंटरेस्ट है और यही शहर पे और फिल्म बनानी है तो आई थिंक और दो फिल्म तो बनेगी मुंबई पर हाँ बिल्कुल हाय प्रशांत फ्रॉम एन टीवी सो माय क्वेश्चन इज की राधा ने बोला कि वो इस तरह की फिल्मों में इस तरह की फिल्में उन्होंने नहीं की हैं इनका सिनेमा दूसरा है सो नाउ आई यू प्लानिंग टू कास्ट हिम इन योर काइंड ऑफ फिल्म और इज राना रेडी टू डू अ फिल्म लाइक दैट या इफ इज विलिंग देन आई 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 वुड बी वेरी वेरी हैप्पी एंड वन मोर थिंग राना आप उनको कोई ऐसी फिल्म देना चाहते हैं जैसी फिल्में आप करते हैं या कमर्शियल सिनेमा आई यू रेडी टू डू दैट पायल Sir, our aim is to make sure this runs as well as a commercial cinema does, and then you'll start calling this commercial ah. after this. Oh, it's good, right? So, what about the mass movie? Are you never say never? Anything can become mass, as if you know it can. We hope for the best. <laughs> Hi Payal this is Priyanka from Midday many many congratulations uh, for this terrific terrific win at Cannes uh, I wanted to actually take it from where uh, Suchin said about you know how so many of these independent films don't get released and I think after your win uh, so many of the independent voices spoke up and said that there are immediate changes that are needed you know in the landscape whether it's from the government kind of to resurrect NFDC or to kind of issue grants and for the industry to also kind of champion these independent voices for uh, for you to be in the center and you know took this you know taken this journey and come so far what do you feel are this the desperate change that the independent filmmaking landscape in india needs we can we can talk a lot about the independent landscape in india and how much support people we need and that is true but you know people keep saying 30 years in can and this kind of thing that's on them man yeah. like we have great films and they should have selected more <laughs> so do you think that uh, a, something like a grant that something which happens in a lot of other countries is also something that the government or you know we as a country should look at we always had grants like until a few years ago there were grants and especially uh, there was also distribution that uh, these films would get whether it was shown on doordarshan or you know we would watch we could see films like that so uh, i think we need to have um, some way that people have access to funding or at least if industries could meet each other because you know to make independent films it doesn't cost all that much <laughs> so <laughs> if there is just a way to communicate with each other and uh, find a way that uh, films can be financed no matter you know how big or small they are wouldn't that be nice yeah absolutely I mean, the more the films there are the more diversity there is it's just a thriving film industry and we have it also Yeah, true. Yeah. But I think you know, recently what also happened was that a lot of people felt that how all we imagine as life should have been India's entry for Oscars, you know, should have been selected. Uh, I mean, it would have been a more appropriate. That's that's a majority voice speaking. How do you feel as a filmmaker? Would you were you also hoping for that? Did you feel hurt? I mean, La Pata Lady is a great film, so I was just happy. <laughs> like it's a, it's a wonderful film. All of us saw it. We loved it. I love her previous film also, Kiran Rao. So I was just happy <laughs> that it's uh, that it's selected and it's the film that's going to go. Hi, uh, Akash here from. Rana, I have a question for you. Uh, right under the light. Yes, awesome. on the right. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, I wanted to know that this is, isn't the kind of films that you've done earlier. Like, so what convinced you to come on board for this uh, project as a distributor? So first uh, i think the first 10 minutes of the film i was really blown like blown with first the performances of the actors like i i was i was sitting at a room i was watching the film with my wife actually and i was just blown the fact i was like okay this is a movie this is not real and i'm watching them perform and i'm just and after a point you're like just being cynical you know you're like okay they'll make a mistake somewhere <laughs> and they just did it was so phenomenal and i was like to me it was like just cinema class theater class everything happening at once i was just so happy to meet her just happy to have this in our in our kitty really and i just feel if we are able to show this to more people more filmmakers there is certain taste that we can create for our audience i think that's that's really a victory for us like as i'm i'm a, i'm a fan of commercial cinema i love movies i love movies of all kinds but this was very very special the, the first very moment i watched it 
Uh, like like he, he said earlier, the, the first title sequence of this film has a few Mumbaikers speaking. I mean, it starts from there and then the three ladies just blow you off after that. Also, uh, Pyle, you know, recently while Kiran Rao ma'am also told that, you know, uh, female, uh, female filmmakers are not much properly, uh, strongly represented in the, uh, we can say that in the international film festivals also, like, you know, so can we say that with this film, this, this kind of film and also with filmmakers like you, the changes begin. Now, more female filmmakers are coming up with their talent. I think it is, I am uh, part of those many female filmmakers whose films are now showing. So I think it's a, it's because of that movement that I am also part of it, not the vice versa. Thank you. Hello, right at the back. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Adash from Bollywood Helpline. First of all, congratulations for the movie. And uh, the title is also very unique. And my question is for Rana, sir. Sir, if ever a documentary is made on you and you are given a chance, if you are given a chance to name that documentary, the title, so what title will you give it? Just like this movie has got a very unique title, what title will be for your documentary? We will speak in 20 years from now. <laughs> and I hope I achieve something proper and we will have a documentary then. Oh. But still, sir, uh, if there is a title you want to give it, like 20 years back, uh, later as well. Sir, I am just trying to figure out the story of my life. I didn't yet set a title for it. Uh, my name is Rana Dagubati and I think that's, that's a good way to start it. Thank you. Uh, um, congratulations, Payal. Should I sit down? Sorry. Uh, can you see me? Okay, sorry. Uh, so, you make a film, and the film goes out, and then people start calling the film Indian, not Indian enough. Um, what is an Indian film? Because at some point, is it, is it because it's made by an Indian, it's funded by an Indian, it's acted by Indians? Is there an Indian texture that people dr like are drawn to or are these just bureaucratic categories that we use for awards? I mean, it's what is Indian is such a complex thing, no? Like there are so many identities within this country and uh, what is that one identity that you would say makes it Indian or not is a mystery to me. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I mean, you have a film of say Ghotok and half, more than half the country hasn't seen. So then, like, is that an Indian film? It's not because so many people don't know it. So w what makes it an Indian film? I think what the statement that you're referring to was a technical one, which had to do with which, what film gets submitted to the Oscars. And if the director is Indian, I think that makes it an Indian film. Uh, I think with that we will have to close it there. Uh, uh, now that your film is uh, gone to the Oscars, from France, I just want to. No, no, it's not gone. It's n it's it's not gone from any from France. No. Okay. <laughs> My bad. So are you planning to? Uh, just there, yeah. Are you planning to take it there? Camping uh, Oscars ke liye? See, it's going to release in America right. on the on the fifteenth of November. Yeah. If you have friends, please yeah. tell them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll see because the distribution will decide then because once it releases then they, they will I see know, how it's after been. after all the jo zaruri cheeze hain uske baad they will decide matlab ha matlab wo dekhenge ki unke liye kya acha hai kya logon ko achhi lagi wahan pe us hisab se fir we'll see <laughs> Oh. Yeah, please come to watch the film. <laughs> I mean, even though the film is about Indian themes, I think it's also about big cities and uh, it's about like the, the mixed feelings we have as people who come to live in big cities and what those cities have to offer us and how they cause uh, problems for us also. And that I think is a universal uh, theme. And it's also a film about friendship amongst uh, the women who come here. So that, uh, I hope that that resonates beyond uh, our country's borders.
so thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for thank coming. You, thank you. Thank you.